So in this question, uh, we have a graph f of x, which is said to be equals to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we have intercepts at m and at some point at 3 and 0, right? And then we have k, which is our y-intercept, and then m and n are turning points. And then the first question, 9.1, it says show that the equation of f, it is given by f of x equals to x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. But then on the equation we have, we have uh, a which is unknown, b which is unknown, and c which is unknown. So now that we have three variables, we usually need three equations. So let's see where we can get those three equations. We can use point K to get an equation. And then we can use point, uh, the other intercept, which is 3 and 0, to get another equation. But then we cannot get a third equation. So this method that we usually use won't work in this scenario. So we have to resort to something else. The other way of solving a quadratic, oh, a cubic uh, function, uh, you can see that f of x is equals to uh, some constant multiplied by x minus x1, x minus x2, and then x minus x3. Uh, these three points uh, being our intercepts, right? But then in our case, you will realize that we only have two um, intercepts. But then it goes on to say that if we have two inter intercepts, we can have f of x equals to some constant multiplied by x minus x1 squared and then x minus x2. So now the question becomes which um, intercepts do we square? We square the intercept that is also the turning point because for you to have two intercepts, uh, you will need one intercept to also be a turning point. So if we do that, uh, then we can try and solve our equation. So what we can do, we cannot uh, substitute um, 3 and 0 because 3 and 0 is at the intercept, right? So we have to substitute any other point. Any other point in this distance is k, uh, which is 0 and minus 3. So if we do that, we're going to get minus 3 equals to our constant but then what is our constant our constant is always uh, this number here so if this number was two then our constant was going to be two if it was a thousand it was going to be a thousand in this instance it's one so we're just going to go ahead and have one then so we're going to have one uh, multiplied by x minus x1 but wait a minute, we know what x is because we substitute in k, right? So here we're going to have 0 minus x1 squared. And then we're going to have 0 uh, minus x2. x2 is 3, right? So we're going to have uh, 0 minus 3. And then we're going to have minus 3 equals to x1 squared. Uh, multiply by minus 3. If we divide both sides by minus 3, we're gonna get x1 squared equals to 1. Here we're gonna have x1 equals to 1 or x1 equals to minus 1. It's easy to see that m is on the uh, left hand side of the y axis, so our correct option is minus 1. So we're gonna have f of x is equals to our constant 1 multiplied by x minus x1, which is going to be plus 1 squared multiplied by x minus x2, which is 3. So we're going to have f of x equals to um, x squared plus 2x uh, plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3. And then if we... Uh, multiply that 2, we're going to get f of x equals to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x squared 
minus 6x plus x minus 3 which is gonna be equals to x cube uh, minus 2x squared plus 2x squared that will be plus x squared actually that will and then minus minus x squared minus 5x minus 3 so now our a is equals to minus 1 our b is equals to minus 5 and our c is equals to minus 3 and the equation is exactly what we are supposed to show and then now we can move to 9.2 which says calculate the value of n n is a turning point and then what do we know about a turning point we know that uh, the gradient is zero right so we can derivate our uh, function and attempt to find n so if we derivate um, f of x we're gonna get 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 and then the gradient attained at tp we know that is equal to zero so now if we uh, factorize this we're gonna find uh, the x coordinate of n right and then find y but then when it's like this it confuses me i don't know how to factorize it like this i have to use the quadratic formula so i'm gonna say x equals to uh, minus b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac divided by qa uh, which is equals to 2 plus uh, plus uh, b squared uh, that will be minus 2 squared minus 4 a is 3 c is minus 5 uh, divided by 2 a which is 3 uh, here we also have a minus so let me put that in the calculator and see uh, which possible solutions uh, we can have here so we have 2 uh, let's start with plus uh, minus 2 squared minus 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by minus 5 divided by 2 multiplied by 3 uh, so we have x which is equal to 5 divided by 3 and then we have x which is equal to uh, minus 1 so okay um n it's on the right hand side of the y-axis so the coordinate for n will be x equals to 5 divided by 3 right uh, so for n we have 5 divided by 3 and y now we can go ahead and determine y so we're gonna have 5 divided by 3 cube uh, minus 5 divided by 3 squared uh, minus 5 multiplied by 5 divided by 3 minus 3 uh, which is giving me um, minus 256 divided by 27 so it seems like the coordinates for n is 5 divided by 3 and minus 256 divided by 27 so now we can move forward and do 9.3 9.3.1 for which values of x will f of x be less than zero okay we can see that f of x uh, will be greater than zero when x is greater than three so that tells us that when x uh, is less than 3 f of x will always be less than 0 right because look it's just clear to see when x is less than 3 is less than 0 when x is less than 3 is less than 0 and so on and then 9.3.2 uh, when will f be increasing f is increasing when the gradient is positive right when we have a gradient and uh, that is positive so we can see that from uh, m going that side the gradient is positive right so from 
uh, that side to m the gradient is positive another place where the gradient is positive is from n uh, going up right so we're going to say that uh, what's the uh, what's the value of x at m we concluded it to be minus one right so we're going to see when x is less than minus one it is increasing and then another point is when x is greater than the x coordinate of n which is 5 divided by 3 and then num 23.3 says uh, the values for which um, f is concave up right so well, what's the point of concavity uh, if i can say so the point of inflation is somewhere here between our turning points right so if you want to find the x value of uh, the point of inflection uh, you just sum up uh, the value of the turning points and divide by two so we have five uh, divided by three uh, plus minus one and then if we divide this by two we're gonna get uh, the x value of the point of inflection right so if I do that, 5 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 2, I get uh, 1 divided by 3. So um, concave up, concave up. This is concave up. And then this here is concave down. So the graph is concave up when x is greater than 1 divided by 3 clearly so 9.4 says determine the maximum vertical distance between the graphs of f and f prime uh, we have already determined f prime so just to do it again we know that f of x is equals to x cube minus x squared minus 5x minus 3 and then f prime x is equals to 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. So when we talk about vertical distance, we're talking about um, f of some point, right? So we're saying uh, for which value is uh, f of uh, our a constant minus f prime of some constant be maximum that's what we want we want a point where uh, this is a uh, maximum right we subtract the two functions uh, we derivate the result and equate to zero and then uh, the value of x we can then sub it back in to find uh, the vertical distance right this is uh, more of like a applied math a physics kind of question so if we do that we're gonna get x cube minus x squared minus 5x minus 3 minus 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 um, and then uh, we're supposed to so if we do that we're gonna get x cube minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. So if we derivate this, we're going to get 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals to 0. So I've already told you, I don't know how to factorize when it's like this. I always use the quadratic formula. So that will be x equals to minus b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and then x equals 3 or x equals to so i just have to come back here and put a minus and then x equals to minus 1 divided by 3. so our condition is that the x must be between minus 1 and 0 right and then clearly this is our option.
So what we can do now, uh, we can take this X and substitute it back into our um, into this expression here. 